Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and this is my knitting podcast. It's been a while since I recorded my latest episode, but I realized that uh, frequent episodes like weekly or bi-weekly uh, podcast episodes are a bit too much for me and I don't really have uh, a lot of updates to show in each and every one of them. So I think from now on I will uh, film knitting podcast whenever I feel like I have something to show um, because I just don't know how to find uh, new words to describe basically same thing uh, and repeat I don't want to repeat myself over and over again so that's why I was away uh, for some time but today I have a, a lot of updates I have uh, finished objects I have some works in progress some new cast-ons and acquisitions Hopefully you will enjoy this episode, but before we move on, let me tell you what I'm wearing today. So today I have my Clematis sweater uh, by Emma Knits or Emma Mayer. I knitted this sweater using Isager Echo Baby in the color E4S, uh, I believe. Uh, I also held a mohair strand with it uh, from the Danish brand uh, Ladybug's Yarn. It's a hand-dyed mohair with this uh, very... It's like a tonal gray mohair, but with some speckles of brown. You can maybe see here and there, there are some brown uh, speckles in the mohair. Uh, I really like how it looks. Uh, and also my um, Sophie shawl uh, made from the same yarn, uh, Echo Baby, Isagir Echo Baby. It was a leftovers uh, from my Clematis sweater. And I actually really like to wear it like this. It almost feels like a set. Uh, I think on camera, because of the mohair, uh, the um, sweater feels a bit darker and maybe like a cooler tone uh, than the scarf, but in real life it's almost uh, identical. Um, yeah, I really like it. It feels like very preppy maybe. Yeah, something like this. I, I like this look. And now we can move on to my finished projects. And the first one, the biggest uh, finished project is, I don't think it will fit to the screen, but this is a Guernsey Yenser or Guernsey sweater um, by Stennis Garn Design. I uh, knitted in uh, tweed recycled by Stennis Garn, uh, also in the color brown. Uh, so this is the sweater uh, I made for my husband. It's really long, it's, it's huge, it's so big. I was so happy to uh, finish it because I just, it feels like I spent forever knitting the sweater. It wasn't actually uh, as long. Uh, I think I spent maybe like two months knitting the sweater, uh, but I did not knit it uh, only this sweater. I had some other uh, side projects uh, when I was working on this one. So that's why uh, it also took a bit longer because I was, uh, my focus was a bit scattered on different things. Um, but yeah, I just, I got, I used to knit sweaters for myself and they are, even like oversized sweater uh, is small, quite small because uh, I'm not a very big person. Uh, usually I knit myself like second size, uh, yeah, second size, um, plus minus of course, depending on the, the fit I want. But this is also, uh, by the way, in the uh, size M, medium. So technically it's also second size. They have uh, S, M and I, I don't know uh, how many, I don't remember how many sizes uh, they have. Uh, but this is also an M. And I also went up a needle size. Uh, so the pattern called for four millimeter needle. Uh, I used 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, so, but it still took me a lot of time. But I really like it. It's so nice. I was a bit afraid that it will be too big uh, for my husband. Uh, when I blocked it, it grew horizontally, like in the width. Uh, usually my sweaters grow vertically, um, but not this one. This one, the vertically, it stayed the same, but horizontally it grew bigger for some reason. I don't know why. And I was afraid that uh, he won't like it. It will be too big for him, but he wore it uh, already. And uh, he says he likes it. So hopefully it's true and uh, 
yeah he will enjoy wearing it but it's really soft the the fabric is so nice i i think this um the tweed uh, contains maybe like 25 percent cashmere or around that um not quite don't have it in my head right now don't have the number but uh yeah it i think it's 75 percent wool and 25 percent cashmere um really like the the speckly details like the tweedy bits it's not very tweedy but it has some uh, variety and uh, I like how it looks uh, also my favorite uh, section of this sweater was this one um, this one because it it was it went by so fast uh, because every row you basically was doing something it's uh, either this uh, pearl uh, ridges or the cave you was crossing the cable cabling the cable uh, and it was always something uh, new other than that i think uh, i already uh, told a lot about this weather in my previous podcast uh, episodes i did some um small modifications for example this section the cables in the section are uh, interlacing with each other and uh, so it goes under the uh, the cable and then go over the next cable and under again in the pattern it was just like oh uh, the left leaning uh, cables was always uh, crossing the right leaning cables uh, I made it so they are they look like this and I think I like this look more um, I think everything else is the same I don't think I had any other modifications at least I don't remember any of them if I did something um, yeah so last look I will of course add the photos how it looks on my husband but uh, I really like it uh, I think it looks really nice um, and uh, yeah I finally finally I finished it ah, I forgot to mention so the pattern for the size M uh, calls for 10 balls of yarn and um, I ended up buying one more ball of yarn and um, using half of it because I yeah I lost the yarn chicken but I think it's because um, mostly because I went up a needle size so I think if you're sticking to what pattern tells you to do so you will be fine with just 10 balls of yarn I yeah now I have uh, half a ball of yarn uh, of leftover yarn, yarn left and uh, I'm actually thinking to knit myself a second uh, sophie scarf in this um, color I think it will be good uh, and uh, I really like to wear it uh, surprisingly because uh, before knitting I had, this, this was not my style at all uh, I usually wore only like chunky winter scarves or of course uh, in, in the summer I did not wear any not in the summer probably in like spring autumn I did not wear any like neck accessories like this um, but now I really enjoy it I really like the look and now when the uh, spring is coming and the, the weather is becoming uh, warmer and warmer. I see so many Sophie scarves on the street and it inspires me so much to need more for myself to have a variety because I have only this one uh, and I enjoy it so much. So yeah, uh, I'm thinking I will cast on the next Sophie scarf in this color. Uh, I have some more leftovers like red or uh, navy, not navy, uh, like electric blue. So I think those also will be fun. So you will see more of his cars in future from me. Okay, so the next finished project that I have is this. Yay, finally! Uh, it's so nice. It's so cute. I really like it. It's a honey clutch by Petit Knit. Um, yeah, this is how it looks. This is like a good side <laughs> because on the wrong on the back side i have one mistake uh last time i was showing you a mistake and uh, some people left comments that they don't really see it i see it but i understand it's like it's not a very big mistake it's uh it's not noticeable it does not bother me but i know that this is like my good looking side and this is a side with the mistake here is the mistake i think now it it's more visible here 
so yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, last time I explained to you that uh, I was trying to fix it, but I just couldn't, and I decided to left it as it is, and it's fine. Like, it's not in your face. It, it's not a huge mistake that I would be bothered by it. No, that's fine. Uh, so. I used um, saffron drops saffron uh, held together with the drops kit silk mohair uh, to knit this honey clutch and this is how it looks I have so much more of this drops saffron so I'm thinking I will need more stuff like this uh, in the, the same um, honey comb motif uh, that it need has a, a, some like a small almost, almost like a card uh, holder uh, like a small pouch uh, so I will probably need this one uh, she also has like a very cute bucket uh, bag honey honey bucket bag I think that's the name that is also like so cute I don't know where I'm going to use it but I just I also didn't know if I need this one and I actually use it quite uh, often I just uh, put a lot of my like s stuff uh, in here and put it in my bag so and usually all of my bags are doesn't have any don't have any zipper or like closure so they are quite open um, and this will this works uh, perfectly uh, so stuff will just won't fall out of my bag okay and now i will show you the inside because inside i have i think yeah i think it's it's fine like this i have my tag um i decided not to use petite knit ones uh, although i wanted to add maybe like here also at the bottom petite knit ones but uh, i think it was a, a bit too much uh, I print, not printed, um, is it, I, they are uh, woven, uh, it's really nice like a silky texture and uh, then the letters are woven, so I don't know how to say printed, yeah okay I was, uh, I ordered a bunch of these uh, tags a long time ago when they just started knitting and for some reason uh, not even knitting uh, I did a crochet bags and I had this vision to have uh, like my tags uh, says saying by Vera by me um, on my um, crochet bags so I ordered a bunch of this one but then for some reason I never really use them sometimes uh, my husband always asks me to put uh, this kind of tag on his sweater I didn't do it yet for this one but uh, on all of the other sweaters I made him uh, I added my tag and uh, I decided why not to add it here I think it, it looks really cute and also I don't have a sewing machine uh, so I all sew, sewn. I have sewn every like everything uh, by hand. So it's not neatest result because like you can probably see here that some stitches. But it's fine. It's inside. Uh, I don't see it. No one will see it. Uh, I've actually really like the result. I think uh, even right here uh, the stitches look quite good so they are not wonky, not wobbly and uh, my thread is almost the same color as the lining so they are not like really visible. The lining by the way is uh, I think it's a pillowcase. Yeah, pillowcase uh, from IKEA. Uh, IKEA. So I I was watching someone uh, on YouTube, uh, they also knitting podcast, and uh, they are they were also like sewing something, uh, and they mentioned uh, that uh, they usually use some kind of like pillowcases or uh, any other like fabrics from IKEA, and uh, I thought it's a great idea because the fabric itself, like just the fabric from the fabric store probably will cost more than a pillowcase from Ikea and I don't really need uh, a lot of material so that's what I did I just bought one pillowcase and uh, used it for lining and the zipper is by Petit Knit uh, so this is my second finished object second and the last one uh, in this video 
I really enjoy it. It's so cute. It's so nice. Uh, I like to hold it in my hands. I really like the texture, uh, like the tec tactile feeling of this um, honeycomb brioche. It was my first brioche project, uh, not the last for sure. So now let's move on to my works in progress slash spring meeting plan. So my first one work in progress you haven't seen yet, uh, but you've seen the swatch that I made. Um, I showed it to you last time and this is my pelican sweater uh, by Isager. Marianne Isager. Isager. Isayer, uh, Isaya, I think that's the Danish uh, way of pronouncing it. Uh, I really enjoy watching um, knitting podcast, Danish mus musings, I think that's her uh, YouTube um, handle, Danish musings, I think. Uh, she's obviously from Denmark, uh, and uh, when she says Isager, she says Isayer. So I think that's the, the correct way of saying uh, the brand name. In Sweden everyone says Isager. Uh, so that's why I'm saying Isager uh, most of the time. But uh, Isayer, that's probably the, the correct way. Uh, that's the, the pattern from a book, uh, An Eating Life, um, that I bought last year. I did a review of the book, so you, if you're interested you can check it out. Uh, it's one of my one of the latest videos. And I also showed this book in a couple of my other videos as well. And this is where I got so far, not far at all, because I started this project three times. I think. First of all, last time I told you all about the struggles I had with the pattern. So basically right now what I did, decided to do, I uh, used the suggested uh, amount of uh, stitches for the cast on and then I decided to just follow my heart <laughs> and do <laughs> whatever I want, however I feel like it. Uh, I of course follow the pattern uh, that uh, pattern gives me the, um, the scheme. But other than that, uh, all of the measurements in the pattern are weird. Um, they are not aligning. Uh, I don't know if it's, I, I told you last time, I think it's a mistake in the pattern or maybe I just don't understand something. But uh, I decided to just um, knit. Uh, as you can see, it's a bottom-up and uh, I measure this uh, sweater against my storm sweater because I think I want them to be quite similar, like, um, fit. So whenever I will need to uh, split, uh, to need front and back sections uh, and uh, the sleeves, um, I will just measure the, this sweater against a, a storm sweater and if it's time, then I will split it and just uh, knit flat uh, front and back and then I will need uh, sleeves also uh, measure, measuring my storm sweater um, but that was one problem with the um, pattern another problem was not with the pattern but with me I never did uh, Italian cast on I uh, adore Italian not even Italian the tubular cast off I it's my favorite my go-to I always use it 90% uh, of the time of the time it's tubular uh, maybe uh, like a 8% of the time it's Italian and 2% it's some other things for some reasons that um, for example as a side note uh, about cast off uh, so for example this is the uh, this is where I will use just a standard cast off I don't know if it has like some actual name for me it's like a standard the, the most like the easiest cast off uh, for 2x2 two two rib because I did um, what pattern told me to to need uh, tubular cast off here uh, so I rearranged the stitches I followed the, the YouTube tutorial I think by um, Laura Penrose I, I don't actually remember uh, I, I watched a couple of uh, YouTube tutorials and I don't like it I don't know I don't see a point if you uh, if I already did two by two rib I think it's fine to just uh, cast it off with standard one because I don't like this at the end it doesn't look neat for me and what I like about uh, tubular cast off it looks so neat 
and this one is not because it's breaking the pattern of uh, two by two rib uh, making it one by one rib and I don't like this like pulling at um, yeah on this side so that's exactly uh, the place where I will use uh, another cast off method other than that it's tubular now go back to this one so like I said Italian uh, or tubular cast offs are my go-to but I never uh, cast it on using this uh, those methods and um, I also found a tutorial I followed it uh, and it went so bad because all of my stitches were uh, spinning on the needle it's quite a lot of stitches uh, I don't remember exactly I think it was around like 200 maybe like a lot um, and um, in some of the videos um, someone mentioned that it's better to uh, cast on using just the straight needles for beginners because then you can like it's easier to not to twist stitches I didn't have any like straight needles I have only um, round needles um, but and that's why all of my stitches were twisted uh, I tried I needed like a rib uh, ribbing I think uh, and I just it was bad so I unraveled it uh, and I cast it off cast it on using just standard uh, back long tail cast on method um, and I needed using this method uh, also I think a rib um, and then I realized, uh, well, it feels like I'm kind of like cheating because like why am I needing to first of all to learn some new skills that's why I pick up picked up this uh, like a project because it's a new skill for me uh, of course I already needed uh, color work but not as much so I want to improve my skills uh, and also I knew it's going to be uh, bottom up so it's also something new for me so why am I uh, backing up uh, on the cast on method and uh, of, of falling back to my usual one uh, where here is like a perfect time to learn the skills to improve yourself so I unraveled um, the ribbing uh, with the long tail cast on and I found another tutorial uh, for the um, tubular cast on and that was interesting because it used uh, additional yarn uh, that I needed to like rip off afterwards and it actually worked but when I uh, removed the this additional yarn it flared it flared so much so for example this is uh, what like my my last one uh, I will talk about it uh, in a minute uh, but uh, the one before that uh, like the ribbing was like going like this so uh, those stitches the, the first the, the base uh, stitches were so loose uh, and even though I went down couple needle sizes I think uh, this is five yeah this is five millimeter needle I think I uh, cast it on using three millimeter needle and even though uh, it was so flared uh, so I threaded the um, oh, what's the word the elastic uh, through it through that like tubular cast on it yeah, that's why I like tubular because you can actually thread through the tube uh, elastic uh, I did it with some of my sweaters uh, and it worked it cinched everything uh, back to place and I needed I think up to this point so yeah maybe where the body of the pelican was done and I started knitting the the next so I needed quite a lot of color work and then I was also okay but why why do you settle on the half baked result uh, it's not perfect I know it's not perfect I know there is this uh, elastic thread and I don't have anything against elastic threads I really like them I think it's like really useful um, tool to keep like shape of your like necklines or like even the, the hem lines sometimes um, but usually I add them when I see like the sweater becomes like stretched a bit so uh, I don't add it just right after I cast it on I think I was also so eager to do color work so I just 
I wanted to go through uh, the cast on and uh, the ribbing so fast so I just wanted to do anything but in my mind I knew that it's not going to work it's not going to um, satisfy it's not going to satisfy me in the long run and I will always know that there is the mistake that I did not a mistake but something I did something not 200% so I unraveled everything again and this is my last uh, try and I think it it's way better it's not perfect though but it's now it's uh, I can actually accept it so this is how it looks now let me come closer because I don't see anything yeah so this is how it looks now. It's also a tubular cast on that I tried. I found uh, another tutorial. Uh, this time it was actually a Ukrainian tutorial um, on YouTube by a Ukrainian um, podcaster. And the problem with this one, you see it's like tilted to the left. I probably also did something wrong but this one does not bother me comparing to what i had three times before that this is almost perfect uh, it's a neat clean um, edge yeah the the last uh, stitch looks to like i don't know to the side but no one will see it it it's going to be on my waist uh, it's going to be low it's also going to like stretch so it's not a problem it's not so obvious it's not so visible it's not perfect uh, but it's my first time and um, I will try next time to do um, to do it better to understand uh, where the problem lies because right now I don't even know what I did wrong I followed the tutorial to the T but yeah something is clearly not as it's supposed to be uh, but right now I am satisfied it's not flaring out it's um, the stitches are not wobbly and uh, it looks quite neat from afar and no one will look at my sweater like like this uh, trying to judge my stitches um, and now yeah I'm working on the color work or not, actually not I'm not working uh, on this sweater now right now it's on hold I think until autumn because this feels already a bit, I don't know, uh, it feels a bit too late for this sweater. First of all, the colors. For me, it's like an autumn color, colors like a brown. Um, that's what I usually I wear during uh, autumn. Uh, I may finish the, the first uh, pattern repeat, like the, the pelicans. For, um, I think it's not. I'm not too far away, it's only like a head of the pelicans left, so if you can see this is like the, the neck, this is the wing, uh, and here is the beginning of the head. So I need maybe like five more rounds to finish the, the heads of the pelican and then I will keep it until uh, next autumn and then I will pick it up later uh, this year. But I'm satisfied leaving it in this state. Uh, because then it's going to be so easy to just go back and pick up and grab and uh, do color work and not worry about cast-ons and all of that stuff. I will show you my uh, floats now. I'm so proud of this, uh, of my floats this time. Here how they look. Okay, maybe this side is better because I don't, there is no uh, change of colors. I think they look very neat at least in my view um, yeah like I said it's not my first color work but I think it's the, the first where I actually like think about my floats um, because in my porcelain sweater there was also some um, quite big gaps um, where you need to catch float but I didn't do it because uh, in some places the the background color were visible was visible when I was uh, picking up float and I didn't like it especially on the white background the blue was just shining through uh, the white uh, it was so obvious that there is like a catched flow so I just uh, decided not to do it uh, intentionally and it not bothered me bothers me at all it's 
uh, yeah it's inside I don't see it no one sees it it's not making my sweater worse but this time since the the thread is so uh, like thick and also like toothy it uh, catches itself very nicely you don't really see any like a uh, catched floats from the outside and that's why I do it without hesitation so yeah like right here for example here I think there was one float catch but yeah it does not visible the yarn I use uh, for this sweater it's a Hilles Vogue Sul uh, in the colors brown this one beige and light brown really nice uh, yarn uh, it's the first time I'm using it it's like I said very like grippy very woolly yarn uh, very like I think it's perfect for color work um, for cables I think it also will work fine yeah and this is my result my work in progress so far now we can move on to my uh, latest cast on my uh, current work in progress like i said the pelican sweater will probably be on hold until autumn and uh, right now i'm focusing all my attention on this sleeve <laughs> it's a sleeve of haraboji 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 cardigan by egg unit i am in love with this um, project it's it's so addictive to knit I can't stop I really like this huge like chunkiest cable I think it's going to be on top of the uh, of the sleeve like that uh, I really like this um, how do you even call it like a I don't know the, those like a small cables it's a it's a mock cable actually and then uh, the same on this side and on the inside of the sleeve it's a moss stitch and I just I'm yeah I'm obsessed I'm in love I really like the look uh, of the, the whole cardigan I really like how I am progressing right now like the chunkiest 2 by 2 rib I use just a standard this time standard uh, long tail cast on because what I just explained to you with my pelican sweater cast on I did not want any of that so I decided to just go for the regular one and I think uh, Egyo need I think her, her name is Caroline she also used uh, the same uh, cast on like a long tail cast on at least um, like I looked closer close to her um, photos and I think that's exactly what she did so I don't see a point of struggling uh, and it looks fine I don't see any problems with that for especially for two by two rib there is no point of trying anything else um, for this one I use the recommended uh, yarn it's a uh, Raumagarn uh, Fievel in the color light uh, yellow I think it's number eight right now I am obsessed with this color uh, like this yellowy like a butter yellow um, banana yellow uh, light yellow colors uh, it's my my current obsession as well as two other colors one I will show you right now in my acquisition section uh, and another one I still don't uh, did not buy any yarns in this color it's this um, green like a sagey green color uh, I'm still trying to find the perfect shade for my uh, next project uh, I can't find it yet I need to look into uh, knitting for olive um, but I don't want their dusty artichoke uh, I think it's too cool for me I want something just a little bit warmer and uh, this specific color that I have in my head it's so hard to find so now I'm just on the hunt for the perfect uh, sage, sage green color uh, that I will like uh, but yeah th this light yellow uh, I just adore I think the cardigan in this color will look so cool uh, so nice for spring uh, and for autumn also I did not want to go with just a beige because I don't know or gray it's I will have a lot of time to uh, knit 
gray and beige I wanted something fun I wanted something different and it's not very bright it's not saturated it's not like statement uh, color uh, it's also quite muted uh, but it has some color to it uh, which I really like uh, so yeah that's my current work in progress that I'm meeting on right now um, and hopefully I really hope to finish it uh, as soon as possible uh, as possible because I just want to have this carrot again soon and now we are starting to have a really nice uh, warm weather uh, and I think it's time to wear the cardigans or soon is going to be time to wear cardigans and I just want to have this cardigan uh, ready for this short period of time of spring where you can wear cardigan uh, without any like outerwear uh, on top of it uh, with just like a t-shirt maybe and the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about it's my yarn acquisition which is like really exciting for me so here I have quite nice package. It's from a New Tiden yarn in the color apostrophe. And here is the yarn. Oh, it's so pretty. That's uh, what I told you. Uh, like I have obsession with the uh, yellow color. I have obsession with the sage green and with this like dusty pinkish color also. It's so so fluffy it's so nice so first of all the elephant in the room it's an unspun yarn it's my first unspun yarn ever um, and also it's my first time ordering from New Tiden, uh yarn I did not know about the existence of this brand uh, until like recently uh, and I found out about this brand uh, just watching a YouTube podcast uh, so her YouTube uh, channel is uh, what's Milly making uh, I believe and I I think she's from New York or around like in that area uh, I've never been to New York I don't know any like regions around New York and uh, what's the difference between them uh, New Jersey New York for me it's like the same thing I know it's not but it's out there far away uh, in the United States where uh, I've been only once and not even on that coast um, so she mentioned that uh, she has uh, the yarn from this brand, Nutiden. Uh, and what she made uh, using those yarns, it, it looked amazing. I really like the sweaters that she made using these yarns. Uh, and I was so intrigued of uh, like this unspun yarn. I wanted to find out more. I googled, of course, the name brand, Nutiden, and I realized that it's a Swedish brand. And I live in Sweden. And uh, why didn't I know about this brand or did not hear about this uh, brand from any other uh, YouTuber who I'm watching? Um, I was surprised and uh, of course um, I wanted to order it right away but the, uh, the thing with this uh, brand is that they don't really like sell yarns on a, like a regular basis uh, they release batches of yarn a couple of times per year it's maybe like six times per year or uh, I don't know uh, like something around this number um, and uh, all of their yarns are very like unique uh, the batches are not uh, huge it's like a small batch of yarn where they just sell it and then that's it it's done you will not get it again uh, they don't uh, sell in any stores so they uh, yeah it's you can only order this yarn from uh, their website uh, and I was so lucky the timing was perfect because when I found out about this brand when I was doing my little investigation uh, about what is even uh, mean uh, like an unspun yarn they uh, announced the new batch uh, and I just felt in love with this color like a pink color uh, and I patiently waited for the pre-order I ordered it and then here it is uh, I ordered 300 grams um, of yarn and I think it should be enough for a sweater and the plan for this yarn first of all I need to buy a mohair to hold it uh, together with the yarn and I'm planning to knit a Brady Loops sweater by other loops uh, using this yarn uh, of course with the mohair I don't have a mohair yet I need to take this um, yarn go to a store and find some uh, 
good match but I'm not in a rush because I need to finish my cardigan first of all and then I will jump into onto this sweater uh, what I realized during this couple of months of my YouTube um, career let's call it this way uh, I'm not um, multiple projects neither I can have one big project like a sweater or cardigan and maybe like a small thing like a sock or I don't know uh, a scarf uh, on the side but uh, when I try to knit a couple of like big garments I just uh, I'm so stressed because I really want to finish uh, one like garment as soon as possible but then there is another one which is not taking any uh, which is not receiving any love from me so yeah I realized that I'm not I'm like really pretty monogamous knitter uh, with some exceptions of like a small things uh, so I'm not going to cast on this project soon um, maybe when I will be done with the like, uh, first sleeve the body of the, the cardigan and then when I will be around like the the next uh, the last sleeve then I can cast it on uh, so I won't be so stressed about both projects on my needles at the same time um, yeah but this is my latest acquisition I'm in love I really like it's so fluffy it's so soft I think uh, well I did not knit anything with the yarn yet so I don't know how it how it's going to knit up how it's going to hold but right now I am a fan and I'm already looking at some other uh, brands of uh, unspun yarn uh, I just want to try them all um, yeah but first I need to finish the project in my in this yarn um, okay and that was it that was all of the things that I wanted to share with you today let me know if you ever tried knitted in yarn if you ever tried unspun yarn let me know also if you knitted the Harabogi cardigan. Do you like it? Do you wear it? How was the process? Because I am obsessed. I'm in love with the final result, uh, like with the division. I'm in love with the construction. I'm in love with the cables. It's so nice. Uh, it's so, right now it just flies by. Uh, and I think I will finish it quite soon. Um, so let me know if you have this cardigan or maybe you you want to knit this cardigan and also give like to this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see uh, more updates on my cardigan on the the yarn uh, on any other stuff on my future projects uh, past projects and any other knitting related stuff thank you so much for watching we will see you uh, next time bye bye